What's happening everybody? I'm Daniel DJ Webs and welcome back to the channel. Brennan from Evolve hit me up last week. We were kind of talking about some new technologies coming out, new devices coming out from Evolve and I knew immediately, I, I knew I had to drive to Evolve in Ohio, especially because I'm just three hours away. So I got John, I got Brandon on camera. It may look a little awkward because we are social distanced. Each one of us has one camera in front of us, but we may be looking a little bit off trying to look at each other while we talk at each other, even though the cameras are set right in front of everybody. Uh, Brandon, thank you so much for uh, the invite uh, to come here. I, I heard you have some really special technologies. Um, a really special device coming out. Yeah, this device is specifically aimed at the smoker. Um, we looked at uh, what we've been doing wrong. We've been converting about 20% of the people that try vaping um, transition to vaping. Uh, many of those are still dual users. Um, and we looked at why we weren't getting more. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Again, social distancing. Um, but we, we looked at why we weren't getting more uh, more people transitioning. And um, one of the things we came up with is that the e-cigarette, as it's as all e-cigarettes currently exist, um, work in a way that um, is from a control standpoint, work in a way that's opposite of an, of an actual combustible cigarette. I don't actually think it's that the industry forgot about the smokers. Okay. I think we tried that. We said, okay, this is 2014. Everybody's going to convert. All the smokers went out. They bought a blue. They tried it. And then they said, well, yeah, no, it's not a cigarette. I know a cigarette. Um, and so we, instead of saying, okay, what are we doing wrong to only be getting 20% of people that try it, despite obviously everybody tried it at some point. Right. There, there aren't any smokers that haven't at least picked up on a noodle on it. I'm sure there's one, but we just weren't doing it right. right. So they say, okay, well, sure. Maybe if I'm very concerned about my health or getting a lot of pressure, or, you know, and some people like it, but for us to say, well, everybody tried it, we got one out of five, and uh, so obviously it's, you know, what we're doing. Now we're going to say, okay, well, we forgot about them. We didn't forget about them. Okay. We just had no idea how to actually provide them with a product that was going to do what they needed. As an industry, for 10 years, we've sort of been fixated on what can we do rather than what do we need to be doing. So this product, which is sort of my white whale, and I'm very pleased that it's out because okay. <laughs> I don't know that I can survive getting older and fatter trying to get this stupid thing from the, yeah, we've sold a handful of them, there you go, FDA, to, yes, this is actually manufacturable and producible, because um, it's very, very hard. But fundamentally, vapor products, you get you know, it, you set it up where you set it up, and then you get what you get. And if you try to deviate from where it's happy, everybody who's watching the show knows this, it gets real bad real fast. Okay. Um, the biggest problem with e-cigarettes is a cigarette, the harder you pull on it, the more intense it gets. Right. And that's very natural. And even The more it burns and the, right, the more exactly. intense it gets. You, you get more vapor, you get more heat, you get more flavor. You know, very, very... Natural, or even if it's not natural, that's what somebody who started smoking at 12 and is now 74 years old has been doing for 62 years right. and saying, no, 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 what you've been doing the whole time, yeah, you're going to have to unlearn all of that. That's a tough sell. It's yes. especially a tough sell for reasons I'll get into later. This does the opposite. This doesn't have, I mean, th this has a whole mess of evolved technologies. This sort of layers on top of everything we've ever done. Okay. But it doesn't have a wattage setting. It doesn't have a temperature setting. It doesn't have a, um, you know, there's so much fiddling to say, okay, well, if you get your airflow ring just like this and you wick it just right, just like this, and you draw through it just like this, and you got to draw really evenly, and you put in a 70-30 juice of the right nicotine strength, this will be pretty okay. You know, that's a lot of places that you can go right. sideways. So, and the people are like, okay, fine. I'll Especially airflow. Right. Especially airflow, um, because an e-cigarette, when you pull harder through it, you get the same amount of power, so that's the same amount of heat generation. Right. And 
you have it mixing with more cool air, so the it gets less intense and it gets cooler the harder you pull on it. Which, which is the total opposite from a cigarette. It's total opposite which from the, a cigarette. The harder you pull, the warmer it gets, exactly. the more smoke production you get as well. On an e-cigarette or a, va a vaporizer, depending on the wattage we set, the harder we pull, the more air goes in and the colder it gets. Right, but the problem is it's so ingrained in people's heads that it should go the other way that you can't really control it unless you're being very, you know, in the transition, unless you're being very, very conscious about it. Because the, the problem isn't that at the extremes it's very different. The problem is on the transitions it's very different. So if you're expecting it to work like a cigarette because you've been a 50 year smoker and you say, okay, that's a little much. So you just slow down your draw a little bit to get a little less and it gets a little hotter you're going to say, okay, well, that's not working. I'm going to slow down my draw more. It's going right. to get you know, hotter and hotter and hotter. And eventually, that's why people who transition are always coughing. They're coughing because eventually you just have to stop going. Right. And you have to stop going because it's gotten so wrong. It's sort of like if you have a car that the steering wheel went the wrong way. Right. As long as you're going straight, yeah, it's fine. Um, and if you think about it, yeah, I could probably do that. But as soon as I get distracted or see anything, you're so overlearned that if I want to go that way, I turn that way. If it starts going the other way, you're just going to start pulling the wheel and just get skid right. off the road. Getting worse and worse. Right, which which is the coughing. And because it makes people cough because they're using it like a cigarette, I think a lot of people when we've we've been doing a lot of testing with essentially people's mothers. People's <laughs> a lot of moms. Yeah, <laughs> it's been a lot of moms. I think everybody would prefer a product that just did what it was supposed to. Okay. But it's it's in the the little things because anytime humans are doing anything, you make small corrections. You say, okay, well, I'm a little bit off to the left of the lane, so I'll nudge myself back a little to the right. You know, you don't do what the cheap lane following systems do. We're like, okay, I want this side. All right, Adam, back to this. You know, because if you've got a lane following system in your car that does that, you turn it off and you say, well, that was a waste of money. Yeah. If you've got one that just sort of hugs the road as it goes, you're like, yeah, this is the greatest thing ever. So we are talking about a brand new product uh, from Evolve called the Reflex. I have it here. Yes, it's called Reflex. And I came here to get uh, their introduction to the device, um, what went on behind the scenes to create such a device and who it caters to. We, John kind of answered some of those questions already by going over things that the traditional combustible cigarette does that a lot of smokers can't find in e-cigarettes. And Evolve is trying to fix them, and apparently they did. As far as how it works, you are kind of getting into how it works. So it, it works in reverse to the traditional e-cigarettes, but more in line with the regular so combustible cigarette. Now, usually I take credit for all of our brilliance, but <laughs> this is actually something Brandon wanted in 2014, and it's 2020 now, and it's sort of taken us to this point to actually make the stupid thing produce work producibly. So, so yeah, no, I mean, usually I'm like, oh, look, I'm the, the brains behind the operation. This is actually Brandon's. But, um, so, but so, the doing it is so you know, by a saying whole that team, it took all this time because you probably spend a lot of time and money in research and development and uh, testing and yes okay. because this is also <laughs> a product registered with the FDA uh, pending for a, a so the, the, this this is our PMTA product yeah so, so you probably have a lot of data charts comparisons all that oh you do oh yes and you you can provide some of those charts to okay. add to the yeah the yeah yeah okay. no we, we we can spice it up with some charts for sure okay. um, but no, I, I just want to make sure that Brandon gets props for this one okay. so fundamentally what we're doing here is and you're in the wrong building we have a whole laboratory that's over by my house in Pittsburgh um, where we've got all the test equipment but fundamentally what we've done is we spent a lot of time stinking up the office having machines smoke cigarettes Okay. In all sorts of different ways, different draw speeds, different brands, different all the rest of that, while we were characterizing all the things a cigarette was doing, you know, across the whole dynamic range. So recording all the that data. Recording all the pressure drops, recording all the aerosol temperatures, recording all the aerosol yields, the particle sizes. Even the, the particles. Oh, yeah. We started out with a basis of we know what a cigarette does right? because for four out of five nicotine users, a cigarette is what they're expecting. 
Right. So, so much of what has happened in this industry so far is, well, we did a thing and this is kind of what it does and hope somebody likes 70 watts or, you know, this atomizer works at 12 or whatever. But there hasn't been a lot of explicit design. So what we started with when we started doing this seriously is, what is a cigarette doing? And then how do we control different things so across the range of use rather than at a specific point, this does what a cigarette does. So if you're taking short hard puffs, it gives you a short hard puff cigarette experience. Okay. If you're taking long hard puffs, it gives you a long hard puff cigarette experience. Okay. Um, and also, you know, this one of the things this does, which we can get into eScribe, is obviously it measures airflow and it measures airflow directly. And when people start using this that have been vaping for a long time, their the graph of their airflow comes up stays very, 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 very flat, okay. and then they stop. Because that's the only way you can use a vaporizer, because otherwise it's going to be getting hotter and colder and blah, blah, blah. Uh, and and the gurgly because you, you suck too hard at the beginning. Right. It, or it's so, so, so by saying airflow, you, to your technology and your boards, you introduced another thing, which is measurement of airflow inside of the device. That's one of the things we added, yes. Okay. Um, so, so yeah, the, the device is measuring the airflow and then it's taking that and some other things that are going on and saying, okay, what would a cigarette be doing at the current user parameters? Okay. So that's, that's half of it is measuring what the user is doing. Okay. And then the other half is, and this is really what made the device hard other than I'll get into the other nuances, okay. but fundamentally the device is hard because if you're making a device that's say an Orion, it's got three settings and it needs to work at those three settings. And you can only, like an Orion I'm using as a specific example okay. because an Orion, when you start doing airflow simulation, you've got good even airflow around the coil at exactly one draw speed. Right. And everywhere else, some part of the coils could be burning. Right. Um, and that's fine because it also only gives you the right amount of power at that one airspeed. So you sort of take it and you say, okay, let's set this up. If I pull like this, it tastes okay. Now I'm going to dial in the intensity and I'll dial in the drop pressure. You know, blah, blah, blah. You dial it down and take it for what it is. Right, exactly. Whereas for this to work, this has to work everywhere. So instead of having a, you know, pot airflow geometry that works at, you know, 12 milliliters per second or 40 milliliters per second or whatever, we had to make one that works all the way from way down here to all the way up there while keeping the airflow perfect. Right. Um, doing that took about 2,000 hours of airflow simulation on, you know, rather expensive software. Um, you know, how expensive? Yeah, you know, reasonable car expensive. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> you know, and uh, two years of an engineer's time. And that's all just tweaking, you know, airflow. tweak this, tweak, yeah, that's just on airflows. But as a result, what we end up with is something that stays very uniform across that whole airflow range. Okay. Now you also have to say, we, you know, the power is variable, you know, the users don't have to futz with it, but it's changing dramatically to get hotter as you pull harder. Okay. It has to be able to ramp way down so that it's a temperature we're controlling of the aerosol, not the coil necessarily, though we're controlling the coil too. You know, way low, where it's wicking in a little tiny bit of okay. juice, and it also has to wick properly and not burn when you're throwing 30 watts at it, which is a lot for a pod mod, um, <laughs> at, uh, you know, high powers, because it turns out when you look at how people actually smoke, when people pull on cigarettes, they tend to pull real hard to get it started and then sort of even off and then sort of taper down. But not all of them. Some of them, it turns out, start real slow and then ramp up. Some are flat, all the rest of that. And so one of my hypotheses is only the people whose cigarette draws were naturally fairly even were able to transition. So this has to be able to rapidly transition from giant amount of vapor to very little vapor without changing the taste, without changing you know, the airflow, without burning, without generating a whole bunch of formaldehyde. Um, it's a difficult problem because instead of being right somewhere, it has to be right everywhere. Just as a party trick, um, you actually going to want to turn it on. So connect the pod and then just hit the button to turn it on. Just as a party trick, uh, you can also take the QR sticker off the pod. 
So the QR stickers, let's go over that yeah. first. I okay. think the QR stickers are a very interesting situation uh, and kind of revolutionary for the industry as well. Can you explain the QR uh, codes on both the pod, device, package, pretty much everywhere? Everywhere. Um, so once you start throwing QR codes on stuff, you just don't stop. Um, so if you scan the QR code for the pod, that'll give you the production history and the test history of that specific pod. And every single one of those runs through machines we built to test all of the parameters. And you know, if you scan the box that the pods come in, it'll show you all, you know, pulls up a website, it'll show you all the production history for all the pods in there. Because you test them on the production stage yes. for consistency. Exactly. Okay. To the point of, would you say that the problem we all have when we get a bed coil or a bed pod that will no longer be a problem with this device because every single pod oh, yeah. is tested before going out and every single pod will be the same yes they're 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 extremely consistent okay so ju just for scale purposes um every single pod the coil resistance is within five milliohms, which is 0 0.005 ohms, and that's that's the limits. They're actually tighter than that, um, because if you want to do reliable temperature control, which is part of this, though one of the things inside the device, yeah, on a stainless coil, you have to be really, really accurate. Um, one of the things that's taken us so long to get this out is. I think when we started sourcing parts and sourcing suppliers and you know that, I don't think they believed us. Because you say, oh yeah, 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 these just all have to be the same within like 1.8%. And they're like, yeah, sure, of course we can do that. And we'll be checking. Okay, every single one, really? And then you're gonna have to put a QR sticker on it and we won't accept the things unless it's got a traceable production history. And then, you know, the gears start to be like, shit, we're actually gonna have to do that. We're gonna have to do that not for like the five that we'll send you as a sample. We'll so do you, that. you started to change the supply. So like, for example, <laughs> just just the, um, the gasket that um, sits between the pod and the plastic, which is just, it's one silicone part. Um, the first mold, to make that part was about two thousand dollars. The production mold to make that part was forty three thousand dollars. Oh my god! Just the one part, one because one. to do all of this, you know, doing parts that are sort of shaped like what you're drew on the screen, that's easy. Doing them such that they're actually super precise in very soft silicone, it turns out it's very hard. You sort of go from the vaping suppliers to the telecom suppliers to the medical suppliers to the good medical suppliers, and then you can actually get what you need. For example, one of the toys that we have kicking around here is a little 3D laser scanner that the, the vertical resolution of is two microns, which is two thousandths of a millimeter, because you know, silicone parts, you can't just be like, oh, I'm going to measure them with calipers because guess what? They squish. And when you're trying to be accurate to very, very silly tolerances, you kind of need to throw money at things. Okay. We throw money at everything but the website. You know, that's... <laughs> Um, it's taken forever because it's not just that, yes, we're serious, these need to be done a lot better than you guys have ever conceived of, but we're also going to be checking. And we're also going to be rejecting things when they're not. Um, and that's, that's taken a, a lot of suppliers and a lot of cultural shifts and things like that. In order to do things where they work everywhere and they work consistently, and in order for this technology to work, you kind of have to do that. And then you probably also used all that for the PMTA, right? Yes. That because everything is traceable, everything is controlled, you mm -hmm. have control every single part, so yeah. so it, it makes for a very complete PMTA. That's our hope. Um, right. Certainly we spent a lot of money on it, right. so and, and a lot of time and effort. And then the other part about the PMTA, this would be a lot easier if the design wasn't actually old. Like, it's a very small device. If you tear one apart, it's a very small device that's very densely packed. If a year ago I'd been like, wow, we're really trying a little too much here, 
let's just make it 10% longer. Some of the things could have been easier, but because it's a PMTA product that's been on the market um, by all legal requirements since 2016, I can't go be like, oh, well, why don't we just make it this much longer so that you know this tolerance could loosen up this, this, this. You know, because then it's a new product and you right. go to the back of the line and all the rest of that. So, you know, that which might have been too aggressive became a poor money on it problem rather than a back off the requirements problem because we can't change the requirements. Right. Um, so that was also extra fun. Um, it didn't end up costing as much as a Ferrari. So, okay. I think that's, I think that's really, um, really important and definitely something that you guys are doing a lot better than the whole industry. I mean, I haven't seen any manufacturer having that level of traceability of every part and concern about the experience. That was something that I always thought about, but mm -hmm. something that I always had in the back of my mind that would be impossible to achieve. And if anybody from all the manufacturers <laughs> would achieve it, it would have to be evolved. I mean, well, you guys have the background, have all the research, the technologies, the data, the, the traceability, I guess, and all the information, uh, all the reports uh, of users. Y you have a lot of information to work with. Right. Even though you had to do all these additional research and, and, and come up with all these new technologies for this device. The, the, the real difficulty with it isn't that any specific piece is hard. It's all the pieces have to work together and right. all the pieces have to be sort of designed. So what took so long was we had to build the entire research and knowledge base to say, okay, we're getting a, we're able to, instead of say, well, we made something, let's see what we get, say, this is what we're going to get. And we have all the pieces in place to know how to, you know, make that, before it exists, right. you know, we can simulate it and do all of these things to say, okay, this is what we're going to come up with. You know. Once again, all the research and development needed. Right, right. To right. With right. This um, but that's that's a yeah body of research that's taken a long time. Uh, but no, in terms of party tricks, the thing I wanted to try is that's okay. that's an unwicked coil. Pull on it just just for just for grins. Just yeah, no liquid. Draw through it. Yeah. Pull harder, pull softer, pull. or whatever you want to do. But yeah, I mean, I think it's not. Which is what you should have, because right. if your mom's like, "Oh, I forgot to, I forgot to put liquid, liquid in, it, in it," and all of a sudden I've got these choking right. cotton clouds, and now I don't have any pods, and the store's closed, and all the rest of that, you know, they'll be like, "Okay, great. You know what's never done that to me? Pack of cigarettes." Pack of cigarettes. Um, exactly. Not only that. But all the other things that smokers have to take in consideration when they buy any cigarette that is refillable mm -hmm. or any kind of vape device that is refillable. You got to prime it, right. drop a few drops of liquid on the coil, right. let it sit for a while, and then eventually mm -hmm. start. Oh, well, has Brandon uh, no, told you about that? Talk to, him, talk to him about the auto wicking. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I'll, I'll let Brandon walk you through okay. that. But yeah. You said auto wicking? Yeah, auto -wicking. Dump, some, uh, dump some juice on it. Yeah. Or, you know, just, yeah, just go ahead and fill it up. Okay. okay. The, the, so the one thing you do have to be careful about, and again, if I was doing it over, I would make it a little bit bigger, even though I do love the size, because, like, the fill plugs, you have to make sure you don't get them in backwards. Oh, there's there. two? Yeah, there are two. So you can fill it from either side? Well, it's small enough that if you fill it from one, you always either leak over a little bit, or you, it's, it's just, it's a lot easier to fill with them both empty. But with, with, them, the, with them both? With them both out. Yeah. And how much uh, does the pod hold? It's a two milliliter pod as mandated by Europe. Okay. And that's another question. You have plans on distributing um, these devices? As soon as our TPD um, applications are accepted, we will be in okay. Europe. Those are they're, they're in process right now. Okay. Yeah. So, which is a lot less demanding than the PMTA. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, we do a lot more. Yeah. So I just, I just insert the pod? Yeah, just, just click it in. Now you'll notice that. Okay, if, flip it over. If you look at the light, no, flip it over. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm showing the light. Yeah, what is what is doing? And I'll have some view roll as well, additional view roll. Yeah, every time you attach the pot again, it's going to go into a 10 second auto wicking cycle. You won't be able to draw through it. So no primer puffs needed. No pre wicking. No. Give it a whirl. Okay. Okay. 
I mean, will it get a little stronger a couple of puffs in? Yeah, but but you're not gonna, you don't have to be, okay, well, yeah, prime it, shake it, let it sit for five minutes, drop some. Uh... That's a really tight and nice draw. Again, it, it should be the exact same tightness as a cigarette. Yeah. The draw is muddled on the cigarette. This is pretty good, actually. <laughs> now, if you want to turn... It's kind of nostalgic, actually. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually kind of nostalgic. Yeah. If you pull very lightly through, it will give you very little. If you ramp up during the draw, it's going to... And this is 12 milligrams, and I already feel like... I already feel like yeah. I haven't been getting 12 milligrams from other devices. Is it? It's not that. It's um, the way it's vaporized is different. No, the the way it's vaporized is this. I mean, the the coil geometry is very conventional. It's just the um, like the particle sizes, right? The you know there 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 are a whole lot of things that we had to do and get right that you know I don't know that I want to hand. Like a better, it's like exactly what our right. particle size distribution is and such. But yeah, no, a lot of it is, you know, get the, you know, because all of it's carried by particles. And depending on what the distribution of gas phase to particle to, you know, large particles, small particles, blah, 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 it acts differently. So getting that right was part of. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, but I feel like. I feel like I'm vaping more density or I'm vaping more nicotine without really as much vapor production because I'm, I'm not exhaling as much as I was expecting from what I'm feeling on the inhale. I, I'll let Brandon speak to that. No, but no, that's, yeah, that's, that's, I, I hear that a lot with this. Um, you're not, you're not, you're, 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 the deposition is a little bit more, you're getting, you're keeping a little more. Right, so, so what I'm trying to say uh, so, so I'm I'm correct in assuming that, or in feeling that, when I'm inhaling, or feels like a feels like a big cloud of air. Right. Yeah. I feel like yeah. I'm yeah. inhaling a lot more than what I see yeah. myself exhaling. Yeah. Well, but if you're if you're exhaling it, you aren't getting any benefit out of it. Right. I mean, the optimal e-cigarette, you would inhale and exhale nothing because right. you know anything you're exhaling, you're just that's juice that you paid for that you're not getting any benefit of, plus some right. water vapor. Right. Um, and plus a combustible cigarette doesn't... Yeah, exactly. It isn't, it isn't filling a right. room up. I, I guess we got so accustomed over the years to how vaporizers and electronic cigarettes work that we kind of forget how a real cigarette works. Right. Right. And this is very surprising so far. And the draw is just perfect. The airflow is fixed, of course. Mm -hmm. But as you said, you spend a lot of money and a lot of hours to develop the airflow to be exactly like a cigarette. Mm -hmm. and shaped as we as we inhale, right? The yes. harder or the softer mm -hmm. we pull, um, the airflow will match mm -hmm. either situation. This is probably the first device I experienced that I don't feel like I need adjustable airflow. But, and, and that's one of the first things I noticed when I vaped it for the first time. That well, the airflow is perfect. You have adjustable airflow. You're just doing it yourself. Doing it myself. Right, right, because it's reacting to what it, you like you expect it to do. You don't have to say, okay, well, to get the temperature up, I'm going to need to choke it off a little bit and right. blah, blah, blah. Um, so, you know, you go from a million controls on it to it's just doing what you're expecting. But yeah, no, you shouldn't need adjustable airflow because if you were content with a cigarette ever... Right. And the, because the, of the traditional airflow. cigarette doesn't have airflow. Control. Yeah, right. try, try pulling through it very softly. You should still get plenty of flavor. You still should get, and then pull through it very hard. Um, you should get the same, the same flavor profile. So I feel like the soft, uh, either I pull soft or I pull hard, the flavor is always the same. It's always consistent. When I pull hard, um, it it's hard, it's actually hard to explain. So no matter if I pull soft or hard, the device is doing all the calculations to provide the same exact, depending on my draw. Mm -hmm. So you having, all, you, the device is taking in consideration all these different variables, including the airflow, mm -hmm. which is measured by some kind of sensor. Yes. Yeah, and you're, you're varying the intensity. 
by growing harder or softer. You're, right. You're deciding. Right, and and you can do it in in puff too. Yeah, I mean, now if you do want to play with. I don't know, you pulled the pot off, but um, it, it does have three settings. Okay. So if you hold down the little button, okay. um, it'll cycle between. So green is a light cigarette. Yeah. Orange is a full, full flavor. flavor. Full flavor, and blue is an ultralight. Not that you can't go into eScribe and start and customizing things. Sure, if if you want, but nobody's mom wants to do that. Right. You know, when somebody gets one of these, there's no there's no long instruction to it. Yeah. Right. You simply say, what is Oh, your I don't know if that's true. But it does have instructions. No, it does okay. have instructions. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Actually, all of this is written by our lawyers. Yeah. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> Carefully written by uh, your lawyers. The back end is all. I mean, it, it's all pretty boilerplate, but yeah, yeah. so. But uh, I guess what I'm saying is there's no. You know, when you hand somebody an e cigarette, uh, a smoker an e cigarette, you're, there's always that sort of, okay, I'm going to tell you some things. Right. You know, I've got some things I'm going to tell you that you need to know before you draw on this. That you don't need to. You just right. hand it to them and say, here, treat it like a cigarette. So there's literally nothing they need to know other than turning it on, filling it off, and use it like a cigarette. Well, I mean, our instructions go plug in, remove the pod, fill it, replace the fill plugs, insert the pod, and puff on it. Yeah, right. that's it. I mean, <laughs> that's it. Okay. As far as the pods, there's only one type of pod mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. so not a whole lot to change or to try. So it's it's a pretty straightforward experience from the device to the pod. Yes, yeah. so there are a couple things you need to know. Okay. Uh, the, the two most important are the orientation of the plugs because they okay. they determine airflow. That's why they have kind of a little runs, arrow. Yeah, they've got an arrow that points actually runs okay. through those two plugs. So you, you see okay. how they're, they're 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 grooved with the arrow shape. So the arrow the, the arrow on the plugs is the airflow as well. Yes. yes. Okay. And it points toward the, the two arrows should point toward the two pins in the bottom. Okay. The two gold pins. Uh, that's the single most important thing is to get those plugs in right. Now it's very difficult to get them in wrong, but I've seen it done again and again and again. Okay. <laughs> so, so it's clearly not very yeah, difficult. Very, yeah, right. Right. Okay, it's, it's somewhat <laughs> difficult. Um, the other thing is that after each use, you're going to want to wipe the pod in the well bin uh, because condensation will collect. We don't recycle the juice. Okay. Um, because it's not good to heat juice and cool juice and heat juice. So, so you made the chamber so, so the we're condensation actually drops. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Okay. Because in every device, there's always going to be condensation. Yeah. Yes. A lot of devices, because a lot, a lot of vapors tend to um, think about condensation as leak. Well, there's leaking and there, there's there, there's, there's leaking and right, condensation, right. sure. Uh, but there's a lot of devices that that kind of reuse that condensation. Mm -hmm. um, and as as you pointed out in real in, in very well, I didn't know that. But condensation isn't supposed to be vaporized again. Right. Well, well, I mean, supposed to is design yeah. intent of the device, right. but I mean, every time you go through a heating cycle of the e-liquid, you, you know, change it. So, like, for example, formaldehyde, not that everybody wants to say, oh, formaldehyde, but, um, you know, is a thermal degradation product of propylene glycol and glycerol. So, if you heat it up a hundred times, you're going to get a hundred times what you got if you don't. Right. Um, so, so that's part of it. Um, the other thing is, you know, if you just draw a schematic of our pod, certainly you don't have to use this. A lot of devices have a very, very restrictive inlet. Okay. Um, so when they get condensation, it wells up in the bottom of the pod. And so then, you know, when you pull through it the first time, it's gurgling or spitting or whatever. But it's it stays with the pod when you chuck the pod. You know, it's there. Ours, it's a very open inlet for a whole bunch of reasons consisting of several thousand hours of CFD and all the rest of that. It's also a very complicated inlet if you really stare at it. Okay. Um, so as a result, when you get the same condensation, it's going to end up here where you clean it out by wiping rather than end up here where you clean it out by just blowing through it. Okay. So, you know, it's it's not that we have tons more condensation than a typical thing. It's just, you know, it ends up in a different spot and you got to deal with it in a different right. way. So those are literally the only things to take in consideration. The orientation of the plugs and the condensation that has to be cleaned from the well. Uh, and we have an air sensor this time mm -hmm. that, that activates the device when we pull and measures the airflow 
and allows the device to operate as intended, yes. measuring the airflow and the volume and how hard or soft we are pulling. Is there any concern? Any concern as far as that sensor and the condensation, or is the sensor is, is very very waterproof? Okay. So. Um, so is the whole device. Right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So even the well is sealed from the electronics. The PCB is still coated to be water. The PCB is still coated. The well is reasonably sealed. I mean, it's it's not a reliability issue that we say wipe it out. It's a, you know, if you don't, eventually the juice will seep down everywhere, and then right. you'll be in your pocket, and it'll you'll have it right. you know, coming out around the button or whatever. Um, so yeah, no, you, you can be a dirty bird like Brandon and yeah, never do I, that. <laughs> but you just let it drink. Mine are weeping out the bucket. <laughs> um, but you don't have Four to be. <laughs> you know, so so yeah, no, if, if you if you don't care, feel free to even ignore the things you have to know except the fill plug orientation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, now you can, uh, to lock this device, to turn this device off, you just blow into it. Just give it a little blow. See how it flashes white? Not pull on it, blow into it. Oh, blow. Oh. So if you want to lock it. Okay, and then to unlock the same? flash white. Yep. White means it's locked. Yeah, and now you're orange, which is yep. your setting. Yeah. Just give it a little blow. Doesn't take much. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in, instead of inhaling, you just blow a little blow. Yeah. And it yeah, just a little locks it and I mean, locks it the button. You can the button click, locks it and yeah, locks it. you can click it five times too okay. if you're yeah. feeling feisty. But right. um, and you know the reason we did that was most people don't lock their devices because really. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, right. wait, or three, or however many. I mean, whereas if you can just sort of do it naturally while it's right. in your mouth anyway, people actually do. It's actually pretty interesting. I mean, you just blow it. Well, now it's... Not while it's yeah, doing the auto-wick, but... Pretty wicking, yeah. So every time I pull out the pod and, and, and assemble the same pod, the device doesn't know if it's... Yeah, the same it, it doesn't, so because, it, you it know... It primes every time. Right. What we did... Well, one, it's refillable, but for two, um, you know, we didn't add anything like Views has where you've got a microchip inside it that's reading and making you throw it out or, you know, things like that. So, yeah, it, it doesn't know if it's the same pod or a different pod, because all the pods are the same. And how does that priming process work? I mean, there's really no motor inside. No, no, it, it's, on anything, so. it's doing it thermally. Yeah. So as things get, you know, as propylene glycol gets warm, it gets thinner it and flows. flows more easily. So it's running through a thermal profile where it's holding it at a temperature um, profile while it's going so that it's not burning the coil and it's not you know, causing issues, but it's hot enough that it takes 10 seconds instead of five minutes to wick out. A fair amount of the technology in this is just watching Brandon wreck stuff. Um, <laughs> you know, because because Brandon has essentially unlimited supplies of pods and devices and all the rest of that, um, you know, it'd be like, yeah, no, I can make it wick out in 20 seconds if I don't mind trashing pods left, right, right and center if I do it wrong. And it's like, okay, can we do that, you know, with the computer doing it instead of, uh, right. you know, just trying to feather it. No, that's, that's something pretty special that you guys did to this device. And you notice the chimney is not metal. The what? The chimney. Oh, the, the whole pod's not metal. Yeah. The pod is probably what, PCTG? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it is not. Do well, you're probably gonna burn the QR code. No, well, I mean, I did actually catch the QR code on fire. The pot is Altum. I didn't even know Altum could be done in this color. Yes, it has to be custom done. You have to order it a lot at a time. It's okay. something on the order of twelve times more expensive than PCTG, oh, but. It's, um, I mean, so no, the, the, the pod is, the, the QR code is not, yeah, not all time, but, but yeah, because we're using a plastic that's, you know, operating temperatures like 450 degrees Fahrenheit continuous, um, we can run it like it's a metal coil, even though it isn't. You don't have to worry about um, if you're chain puffing it, the pod melting, which, right. You know, we've definitely seen. So no, if you say, what are the most expensive things you could possibly make a pot out of? Well, it turns out it's Altem and gold and silicone. Right. <laughs> so how much will um, a pack of pots cost? 
uh, each individual pot is six dollars. Okay. Okay. There is a discount when you buy the five pack, but yeah. Right. Um, but but yeah. It's but I'm assuming that with all these technologies and, and temperature control, well, not necessarily temperature control as we know it. It does temperature control. Temperature. Oh, it, it does temperature control. Okay. So every right. everything we've ever done is layered into here somewhere. Okay. Um, but I'm assuming with all those technologies, the pot is probably going to last longer than other. That's been my experience. Yes. Okay. So I, I get at least a week. Uh, usually okay. much longer. Now, if you're using a juice, it's it's a just a standard organic Depending cotton the wick. Liquid, so yeah, if you're using a juice that's like 90% sugar, it's gonna end up all caramelized. But yeah, no, you. But, should. but you're not gonna get a bad taste. What you end up with is just a more muted. Okay. Um, so it's gonna become more muted as that as that caramelization builds up on right. the coil. It's just gonna be just more. muted flavor. Yeah. Right. Okay. But but yeah, no, the the pods are. Yeah, the, the longevity is pretty good because one, we're doing a lot to right. both push them and baby them, and two, you can stick them in your oven, bring them back out, and <laughs> they're not going to care because right. everything's good to 450, 500 degrees. And now knowing about all the technology, all the research and development behind the scenes, all the money invested <laughs> in this technology, plus the PMTA with the FDA submitted already, right? All of that taken in consideration, how much is the device going to cost? Well, that actually depends. I guess is really a branding question. Right. You're how old? I'm 35. You're 35. It would be $120 for you. Okay. The uh, device with one pot. Yeah. The device with one pot okay. would be $120. I just turned 40 last week, so it's $80 for me. So you get a discount. Because you get a discount if you're over the age of 40. Yes. The reason being? Uh, a couple of... Well, go ahead. Well, I mean, no. no. So, <laughs> reason being... Well, one, because... That's really who it's targeted at. Um, over the course of the design of this product, I went from being 35 to being 40, and I also went from not having kids to having kids. But um, let me tell you, the difference between how you're feeling at 35 and how you're feeling at 40, that's sort of when people who have been smoking, and this is, Brent, this is when Brendan was that age, when yeah. we started to evolve, when you say, okay, I gotta make some changes here. Um, so it's really targeted at kind the, of that the demographic age group. that most needs. Right, or most exactly. Wants to quit. Exactly. Um, not saying that a 35 year old wouldn't want to quit, but uh, but you're, you're not talking, I mean, when, when you're talking in relation to cigarettes, right. in Ohio, a, a carton of cigarettes is about $80. Okay. That's one carton of cigarettes. I right. was a two pack a day smoker that, right. you know. But th but that that philosophy on the pricing also uh, protects the product as far as underage use it. Yeah. So right. So we have a perception and intention study that we did for right. PMTA that showed that very thing. Because if you sell the device for a higher price comparison in comparison to a cart of cigarettes, mm -hmm. I mean I don't see any underage kid. But paying this much for a device like this, so I, I think that's a very good philosophy. Well, in, in underage kids that started on vapor, this would be a very foreign control system to them. Yeah, they, they never they, smoked before. Yeah, they, they don't. They don't have a cigarette right. to be nostalgic for. Right. Right. Um, well, but the other thing is just just in terms of philosophy, and I'm saying this is right or this is wrong, but it's relatively expensive to get into. The pods aren't meaningfully worse than other replacement coils for price and they last a little bit longer because we're babying them and because it's refillable it's not and it doesn't even need uh, nick salt juice it's not that expensive to use as an ongoing basis so if you're of an age and station where you're somewhat established buying a device that costs up front but isn't so bad in an ongoing basis to me is more customer friendly, given that the money has to come from somewhere. Because my God, does this thing have parts that cost more than they would have if it wasn't trying to be precise? Um, but to me, that's more customer friendly than the Jewel model, where you say, "Yeah, get into it for twenty bucks, kid," and then we're going to get you for fourteen bucks a day, every day, right. um, for the rest of you know the rest of time. So, because you, you know, you can get into that fairly easily, and then. Then they just sort of squeeze. I think at their peak, they were bragging about getting like three thousand five hundred dollars per average user per year. Um, yeah, even if you're taking them and throwing them at people, I don't know that you're going to spend right. four grand a year on these. Right. 
but but yeah, no, it's um, it's expensive because it's got a lot of stuff going on, right. and the parts are unnecessarily precise unless you're trying to do what we're doing. Right. Um, and then it's discounted above the age of 40 because that's who really needs it. And where, where can people find the device? Uh, just online right now. They can buy the device online. We're hoping to put the pods into distribution. Okay. Um, so online through your site? Yes. That is correct. Through okay. evolvevapor.com. And, but the pods will be uh, available in vape shops? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Well, we're, hope we're hopeful. Uh, you know, that, that depends on the distributors picking it up. Okay. But especially with the European market, you... Oh, European, uh, you're, 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 you're that's different. Okay. 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 So you will find these in vape shops. Okay. But in, United, in the United States, in only, the United only, States only it's through only the website. Available. I mean, part of that is we're... The age verification for the age exactly. discount? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. That, I mean, that, that's really a lot of it. I think that... I think that even though it's a device made geared towards smokers, as vapors or as hobbyist vapors, um, all of us, we, we should be responsible for getting this device in the hands of smokers. As vapors and as hobbyist vapors, we should make it a mission to get this device in the hands of more smokers. Uh, so, so I would actually, is it possible to run a, a, a special opportunity to score one of these on, on this video? Yeah, sure, we can give you some extras. We have a mission. We, we should actually be helping a lot more smokers with the right device. And this is so far, I, I will keep on testing it, I will keep on vaping it, and I'll probably give some more thoughts about the device later on. But so far, I, I really, I, I am really impressed. Thank you so much for watching. Stay sexy and vape on. So this is our initial processing area. Um, after we receive our different individual components for these devices, um, we will initially get the, receipt, uh, the uh, parts in boxes, um, and then we'll break down the boxes. We will double check the packing slip to the invoice and ensure everything is correct. Um, from there, we will take the parts out, make sure the part numbers uh, coincide with what they're supposed to, and then uh, we have a computer that's usually here, my laptop, um, and we will print individual labels, so everything at a certain point will be labeled with the lot number, the date received, so if we have anything that's weird with a lot, we can go back and track it um, individually. This is where your battery will meet the frame, so we don't have any in process right now at the moment, but this is what the end of this process would look like. So you have your tape battery, and then you'll insert your battery into this frame here, um, and then right here we have an auto tape dispenser, so you just press this button and it will dispense a fixed length piece of tape and that will go around the edge there. We will just quickly plug in the device here. It'll run a production utility. Um, this is going to ensure the battery is at the correct level um, and update the firmware and settings on the device. Pretty much a double-sided piece of tape. Um, it will catch any debris that is on your feet, on your way in. This is our uh, laser wrencher. we will receive devices that look like this. So we solve it up there with the felt, the battery, the frame, tape, and the board, and the contact pin soldered in. Okay. Uh, what this is going to do is many, many things at the same time. Okay. Uh, when we plug in and run this, you can see that there's an actual pod inserted here. And inside of this pod is a fixed resistance. Um, so you can just insert the device here. You'll hit the green button. Certain errors, um, we allow the machine like a minute to a minute and a half to push and pull vacuum through. There's actually a ceramic resistor inside. Yep. It's so yes. cool. So we can make our own pods here as well. So we're able to make our own test pods as well. And we're ready to get this packaged up. So what we can do is we have this camera here. We'll set this under the camera. It's going to read the QR code on the device, the QR code on the um, pod, and issue 
a barcode that will go on the box. So if a customer were to scan this, they can see the device and the pod's QR code and the information associated with it. So even before buying it, just scanning the QR code on the box, the user is able to know every, everything about the device yes. before even buying it. They can know the day the board is manufactured, they can see the day the device was final manufactured. Um, we really want to make sure people That is that. pretty cool. I mean, there's nobody in the industry doing that, and that's, that's a very big step forward. So, uh, I think. and the thing is too, is accountability, is we want to make sure we can track all of these products all the way through their lifespan and know right. what happens with them. So at this point, this guy, we know he's clean, we have his barcode print, so we can insert him here. Slides right in. We will grab one of our device boxes that we have. We will apply our sticker that we have. Now we can close this. We will grab our instructional book. It even comes in a very fancy box. I it like that. comes in a nice little box as well. We have our little instruction manual that will go here. We'll open this box and we'll slide these together. And then this is finished product ready to go. Um, after this point, the only thing we'll need to do is heat shrink the device and we'll send it through an oven. Um, and it'll get heat shrink and then it will go into shipping and off to a customer. Nice. Thank you so much. Well, what's your name again? Uh, Jacob. Thank you so much, Jacob. Uh, I, I think I think this process um, is really special from a quality control standpoint, but also really special because we all know cloning in the past. Uh, a lot of Chinese manufacturers used to clone evolved devices, evolved boards, and this completely eliminates them. Yeah. I mean, we've really done our homework and uh, tried our best to make that as replicable as possible and consistent as possible for our user base. All right, you clearly did a lot of work, and thank you so much. Yes, sir.